Hello everyone, welcome to Learn Flow. In this video, we'll discuss another let's code problem. It's the image overlap. This is a medium level problem and we'll understand how you can solve this problem easily and much uh, having a better concept. So before moving on, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, make sure to subscribe to this Learn Flow for le regular let's code videos like this. The question says we are given two images, image one and image two. So those are the two kind of uh, arrays given to us. Okay. So they say that these are represented as binary square matrices. Okay, of size n cross n. Both are of size n cross n. Okay, you need to find like a binary matrix is like only has zeros and ones as values. So that's the binary matrix. That's the image they want to make sure to us. And what do you need to do? You need to find the largest possible overlap. So what is this overlap? They are making sure like we translate one image. However, uh, we choose by sliding all the one bits left, right, up, or down any number of units, okay? So they are moving it any number of units. When we place it on the top of one image, we can calculate the overlap by counting the number of positions that have one in both images. So overlap is what? The number of positions that have one in both images after we translate the image, okay? Now we uh, now note the, also that a translation does not include any kind of rotation. So there isn't any rotation. So uh, any one piece that is translated outside of the matrix border such erased, okay? So what they mean is see, in this example, one they show over here. So there you can see this, uh, this part is there, okay? Look at this part. So the whole image is considered. So this part is first moved one bit to the right. So they, that you can see one bit to the right. Okay. So that will have this, uh, this last bits will be erased off. And then it's been moved one bit to the down. Okay. So then you will see this is the part that is remaining to us. Fine. Now what we'll look for, we'll look for how many bits are there, like how many one bits are there common in both the images. So that's the idea. Fine. Now, this is the thing we are exactly looking for in this question. Now, you may say, why? What's the point of uh, calculating all this? We can simply, uh, we can simply calculate the stuff, right? There's no point. I mean, we can simply calculate how many images are there, like once are there in the image two, and that's the answer. No, that won't be the answer because uh, we may not know that they have not said anything that what happens when new bits comes in. They have mentioned that when one bits are translated outside of the matrix border, they are erased, okay? And there is a rotation, but there is they didn't mention whether there are uh, more bits coming in or not, fine? So that's something we don't know. Next is, uh, you are not sure that all the bits will be one. I mean, it may happen that only one bit is remaining as one. Fine. All the bits are like it's not a three cost three matrix always. It can, can be a hundred cost hundred matrix as well. So you, you don't know where the bits are remaining and what bits are actually one. So directly calculating the number of bits in uh, image two would be a uh, right result. Okay. Now, uh, so how we should go ahead with that? See, there can be two three ways. One, you can use a uh, uh, as usual, you can use an array list or a uh, hash map to just uh, store these values. These values, I mean, how if we just translate it to one position, what is the value? Then we translate it to other position. Like we need to uh, keep translating it to all four directions, okay? Like uh, each step. And you need to find if that matches with the image too. So that can be a solution, but that's not the best case solution you can come up to, right? Because like uh, image one is there, you first translate it to top, you first, then translate it to right, you translate it to bottom, and you translate it to left or done with all the things like then you from each position you translate it to four other positions okay then then you translate it to again four other positions to find out which one matches with uh, this and once it matches then you try to uh, calculate the overlap but remember we are supposed to calculate the overlap so why we take down such a like translations uh, we should look for okay so what can be a good solution is like take another uh, matrix another matrix of size 2n uh, 2n plus 1 in each, okay? So it's a 3 cos 6 matrix. Let's say we took another matrix of 6 cos uh, 6. I mean, not 6 cos 6 exactly. It's 7 cross 7, but it's like 0 to 6, okay? So what? So there we take another large matrix. Uh, that is the, like, whatever the n is. So we take it like 2n plus 1, right? So 2n plus 1 being the uh, length and breadth of that. So now what we are supposed to try to do is like, wherever we find a 1, in our uh, parent matrix, okay, the matrix image one, wherever we're finding a one. So what we'll do, whenever we find a one in our um, image one, we will uh, traverse this uh, whole matrix in image two. And whenever we find a one in image two as well, fine, 
then what we'll do is we'll uh, like we'll simply add that to the uh, matrix. How we'll do that? We'll make say the, all the rows and columns in image one. I am representing with i and j. Okay, uh, remember that I am representing i and j. All the rows and columns in image two, I represent with i one and uh, j one, right? Uh, I one and j one. So what the how we'll do that? We'll simply go ahead with like whenever we find a one in uh, like image one, that's i j being found, and there's a one found in uh, image two as well. So that's a uh, i one j one is also found. Fine. Then we'll do what? We'll simply go ahead in our new matrix. There's a matrix over here. What we'll do? We'll make sure that this i minus i one uh, plus n. Okay, so we're just translating this uh, this image into this you know larger picture. Okay, because you know a smaller picture images like the rows and columns are getting out, right? So we're getting removed. So we are just translating it to a larger picture over here. Fine. Just as an example, see over here in this this is zero zero, right? This is zero zero. So once we find this zero zero, okay, we found that i j is zero zero. Next, we'll search for an image in uh, image two. So where we find it, uh, there is one one. Okay, so zero zero one one. Now what happens? I is zero. I one is one. So zero minus one minus one plus n. So n minus one. What was n? N was three over here. So three minus one. Okay, n was three. Three minus one is two. So both was zero zero and uh, I one J one is one one. So that is two two. So in two two row column, we'll put in one. Like we'd add a one. Okay, we add one. Now. Next, if you see, based on that one, whatever we find the father image, we find it like over here. Okay. See, we are not sure that it's exactly following the other image. Okay. We need to like once we find a one, this one, we are not sure like this one is actually representing this one. Okay. It may represent the this one also. It may represent this one also. Okay. So what our target will be to like wherever there is a match in ones. Okay. Simply keep on adding that in our New matrix, okay. Remember, by default, what is the value of uh, any matrix? Basically, is like zero. Okay, by default, all the rows and columns have the value zero. So we just keep adding one to that position. And at the end, what will happen? We'll have a area. We'll have more or less an area where we'll have the highest values on there, right? So we first got uh, zero zero. With zero zero, we got one one. We check that. Next, we will check for. Uh, for the zero zero, we'll check one two. So this position is one two, right? So row is one and this column is two. So that's one and this two, fine. So for one one, we again got this particular row. Uh, I mean, uh, I was zero minus one plus n. N was three, fine. So we got that. Now now for j, it's the same same formula. It just is replaced with i with j. So j minus j one plus n. So how we're doing that? We simply went as with j was zero minus two. That is zero minus two, so plus n. So three minus two is uh three minus two. You can see that it's like uh one, right? So what will happen? Zero minus two plus three. Now we got one. So here we're just placing it in one. Like uh, firstly it was two and then two one. So here we just place this column. And in the next step we got this uh three three. Okay, we got this three three over here or not three three? It's two two. So zero zero minus two two. As as always, minus two minus two, then plus one. That is one one. Uh, okay, so one one. We simply put that in one one position. So you can find that there's a you know, kind of reverse image is getting created. That's okay because we will uh, do for the other rows. Now we've got uh, one two. Okay, then you got one two. Uh, uh, sorry, zero one. In the zero one, we will subtract the other positions of the whole stuff we get over here. Then we will try creating an uh, image of, of it over here. Okay, somehow our image will be created. Now our main target would be to what is like finding the like. See, every time there is an overlap. Okay, see for this overlap that uh, for for this particular row there's overlap with this that will happen. Then for this particular uh, index we'll have an overlap with this. We'll have a overlap with this, and we'll have a overlap with this. So anyway, see, there's a three overlaps will happen, right? Three things will overlap with each other three times. So there will be three positions. I'm not uh, calculating exactly which. There will be three positions where the value will be somewhat like three, okay? And other positions, the value can be one, the value can be two, the okay, the value can be one. Something like this will remain. So there's the maximum value will come up at any position that is the three that we will find out, and that will be the 
exact uh, positions that we will be looking for. Okay. Now, what exactly will happen? We will go through each of the rows and columns. Wherever we find a value, we'll see whether this is uh, of maximum or not. Once we find the max, it's got a we got a results. Okay. So this can be this has a higher complexity, but this can be a faster solution we can find out because on other methods we need to store the value, then calculate a lot of uh, much calculations are needed, which actually improves like uh, reduces our uh, complexity. I mean. Uh, we might have a lesser complexity in terms of runtime, but our ho whole runtime gets increased a lot. Okay, so let's quickly write this approach and uh, let's understand what we are trying to see over here. Fine, let's uh, quickly show you the uh, code how it goes. So here is a particular approach we have over here. Fine. So first of all, we took uh, this n now n is the image length. So that's n is both uh, the same thing, right? We took this answer as zero. That's the final answer being retired from here. Now, so we're traveling from uh, I and J, this this to traversal is basically traversal in image one. So if we're checking if our image one IJ is one, like if we have found a particular index in image one, then we are going for in that. If if it is so, then we are going into image two. Like for two uh, comparisons, is image two. Okay. If image two is also one, okay. In our count array that we created at another array, that's two n plus one and two n plus one, right? That's a bigger array that we created. Now count array, what we did, we calculated is something like. Uh, we calculated something like, uh, see over here, i minus i2 plus uh, n. Similarly, j minus j2 plus n. So that's the calculations we uh, did. The exact calculation of what I was showing you over here, fine. And we're just incrementing that index value or that uh, position value, fine. So with that being done, we are ultimately getting what? We are just uh, at the end calculating what's the max value we found. It's like we're traversing through each of the row and then in each of the row we're calculating what's the max, max value so whatever the max value found, that's our answer. Okay, we're just calculating what's the maximum overlap we got. Fine, that's the question is even what's the largest overlap we can find. Okay, so if we just uh, run this and show you how it works, we will find out that uh, this question works in what manner. See, this is like a five millisecond and it's like 99.39. Even it at times go for hundred percent with like four millisecond collision, but yeah, so this is the approach it is. Okay, so you can understand like how we are going ahead into this question and how we are finding a better solution to this question, right? So I hope you can understand this question. If you have any doubts related to the question, you make sure to comment them down. I'll be happy to help you out as well. Also, as I say, there can be other solution in this question as well, where you can use uh, hash maps or you can use uh, link uh, analyst for this calculation. But I found it that this uh, using it on an order of n to the power four, it's an order of n to the power four because there's like uh, uh, four for loops that they're running. Okay, so that's the order of n to the power four. So using this order of n to the power four, uh, somehow you can find that uh, this is uh, better in terms of runtime. I'm not saying in terms of the total complexity, but in terms of runtime. So I hope uh, it's clear to you. Uh, so in case you have still any doubts, make sure to comment them down. I'll be happy to help you out in the comments as well. So thank you all for watching this video. Hope to see you soon in my next video as well. Thank you.